Interesting. One of the similarities between the cave then and the urban karst is the introduction of shit. Introduction of shit in the form of bat guano or bird poop in the cave is similar to the introduction of human feces into the underground system by urban sewage. They're drawing parallels here. Shitty parallels. Happy Friday. I, show me I am John Beckman, Professor John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman, the father of Sid, the transgenic mother of sin, your hostess with the most ghetto green screen in the back. Friday afternoon. I saw this article in American Entomologist, this issue of American Entomologist. I just got this issue because we just registered to, I'm going to go to the ESA in Denver, Entomological Society of America. I got invited to give two different talks, two different um, panels. And one of the panels I was invited to, which I had never been invited to before, was the urban entomology panel. So I've been getting more and more into urban entomology with some of the colleagues that I work with and some of the collaborators and visiting scholars who are working with me in my lab are interested in urban entomology. So I'm kind of like tangentially getting more and more and more interested in urban entomology. And so this article, I, I, I opened up the American Entomologist and started looking at this article. And I thought it was just really interesting. It was something, I'm, again, like I'm a mosquito biologist, but I had not heard a story like this before. I thought this was a really cool story. So the title of the story is Caverns of Concrete. So this is the this is actually the the first page. If you look at it in the in the magazine, it's a pretty picture, but the the spread oh, oh come on. There we go. The spread uh, spans two pages. So that's why it looks like Caver of Concrete. Caverns of Concrete. The premise of this article is that urban city dwelling structures, city structures of humans dwelling in urban settings create new microenvironments under which urban entomological pests can survive or overwinter where they normally would not survive. And the context of this article is specifically Aedes aegypti. So Aedes aegypti is one of the worst mosquitoes, the yellow fever mosquito. And if you know anything about mosquitoes in Aedes aegypti, Aedes aegypti is the tropical virus mosquito, the tropical tropical medicine mosquito. So states that are more northern or northerly typically aren't dealing with Aedes aegypti. You do you will see Aedes aegypti in like southern Alabama. They'll find it, sometimes they find it in Alabama. They'll find it in southern Florida, southern Texas. But typically, it's not it's not ranging northward it's a very very it likes it hot it's a very very tropical mosquito typically what you see nor more northern is 80s epipictus but 80s Egypt is a real bad one and this article is an article describing how 80s Egypt has colonized northward and it can live in cities year round because it has colonized the underground structures. And the, the city that they're talking about here is Washington, D.C. So Aedes aegypti has been able now to colonize Washington, D.C. and overwinter there in the subterranean urban structures. And I'm, I'm encountering all kinds of new definitions I've never heard of. So urban karst. I guess karst is like this stuff, like concrete. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of a mineral meaning for it, but it's like concrete structures. So they're looking at urban karst, saying it's a new frontier of urban entomology for biospeleologists. So I guess speleologists, I looked it up, are like biologists who study cave dwelling organisms. And there's like urban caves in a sense that underneath the buildings, there's all these strange sewers and network tunnels and things like that that these creatures live in and they there are microclimates down there through which they can warm up and survive in the winter the urban infrastructure is often characterized by hazardous conditions including the potential for entrapment asbestos exposure asphyxiation and injury from heat electricity or machinery entry often necessitates a buddy system 
So these people are putting themselves in serious risk going underneath, looking at the bugs underneath these buildings. <laughs> so karst topography are holes and crevices and caverns dug in solid rock by flowing water. And these urban systems are very similar to that. And the climates are unique because they have high humidity and buffered near constant temperatures that sit around the average mean annual temperature for the region. So these environments include sewers, stormwater drainage, water pipes, groundwater systems, underground parking garages, subways, basements, machine rooms, steam and utility tunnels, electrical vaults. They mimic natural karst topography. A dynamic wilderness of continuously growing fractures that penetrate the concrete matrix. I like this article a lot. This is a good article. Props to the authors, Albert Green and Nancy Breisch. There are four factors that cause colonization of urban karst. One, a stable environment. Two, abundant water. Factor three, continuous disintegration. And by that, they mean the, uh, the area around surrounding the area is always disintegrating, expanding the cavernous space. So expanding the volume that can be colonized in these regions. Four, the fourth factor, interconnectedness. So there's, these underground caverns are all linked together through tubes and tunnels, similar to a bedrock fissure network. It's giving an example of one particular mosquito species that is already known to be a good colonizer of these settings, which is Telex pipiens molestus. I remember hearing about this. There's some article where they're looking at there, they, I think there's actually like a subspecies discrimination between Culex pipians in, in England or Britain, in, I think in London, that one, one subspecies lives in the underground tunnels and it solely subsists by attacking things underneath in the subway tunnels. And then the whole, it's a whole like different subspecies outside on the surface and they don't, they don't mate with each other. So it's actually like, geographical isolation where one separate subspecies is living underground subterranean in these cavernous karst urban karst environments and another subspecies is living up in the top it's so interesting yes and they're describing here that Q, that, that particular strain culex pipiens f molestus is actually evolved to exploit these underground tunnels in contrast to the one that lives out on the surface. Here's a picture of one of these environments that's being dug up. Look at all these pipes. Clearly it's a very moist environment. It says a construction project on Fulton Street in Manhattan not only illustrates the physical tangles of utility infrastructure, some of which is no longer operational that lie below the surface of older urban core areas. So it's just perpetually expanding and degrading underneath and nobody ever takes the time to clean it out. Look at it down there. Good God, there's no organization with the two. Look at, look at this, these, these copper pipes. There isn't even any like logic to their flow. This one goes up and over this. These two go underneath. Disgusting. Uh oh, here's the cockroaches. These regions are colonized by cockroaches, Periplanetta americana. That seems obvious. Dense herds of um, the American cockroach, dense herds of Periplanetta americana. These secluded areas receive relatively low levels of human intrusion and rarely, if ever, receive routine applications of insecticide. Their arthropod populations tend to be stable. Nasty, the brown recluse, the Mediterranean recluse spider. I wonder if that's similar to the brown recluse. God, I hate spiders. 
but it's more interesting to me. It's more, it's more unique to me that they're being colonized by mosquitoes, Culex pipians, Aedes aegypti, and Aedes albopictus. Aedes aegypti seems to be the first colonizer of temperate zone urban karst that poses a substantial public health risk. So the article is beginning to discuss the similarities of underground urban structures to caves. And it's suggesting the food web of caves rests on the foundation of organic material that comes in from the outside. So in cave systems, how food gets into the cave or organic material gets into the cave is a very important part of the ecology of the cave. Typically it's detritus floating in by the flow of water or batshit guano and birds and things that live in the caves take dumps that's eaten by the detritivores. And then atop the detritivores, there are predators that occur like these common things you see in your house. Interesting. One of the similarities between the cave then and the urban karst is the introduction of shit introduction of shit in the form of bat guano or bird poop in the cave is similar to the introduction of human feces into the underground system by urban sewage. They're drawing parallels here. Shitty parallels. <laughs> wow, this is fascinating. In January 2012, the U.S. General Services Administration, I don't know what they do, the GSA, learned that employees in three basement offices of a large government building in Washington, D.C. were plagued by aggressively biting mosquitoes. So people who were working in a basement in this building in Washington, D.C. were constantly being attacked by aggressive mosquitoes. A recurring problem for at least four winters, the U.S. Army Public Health Command discovered that a tightly covered sump pit in a mechanical room about 50 meters down the hall from the affected offices was seething with hundreds of mosquito adults and immatures. That's so fascinating. Samples were sent to Rutgers and it was quickly confirmed that they were Culex pipians molestus. In this case, the mosquitoes were breeding in an underwater collection from the HVAC system condensate lines. You know what's weird is I always find Culex mosquitoes in my bathroom. You, I always wonder if they like come up as pupae in the in the in the plumbing system and then actually emerge in there, or if they come in from outside and flock to the bathroom. Perhaps the specter of Aedes aegypti extending its range as a permanent inhabitant of these communities will provide the impetus for a major integrated research initiative across the entire spectrum of urban entomology. So they're trying to scare us. It's interesting. Very interesting article. Caverns of concrete. <sighs> hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, and have a good day. Show me, I show me death, hell on. Take